Inside the main hall of Southampton Civic Centre are two intriguing sculpted panels. One, above the door to the council chambers, features the head of a man, and the other, over the top of the entrance to the mayor's parlour, is a woman. Each is finely carved, with features denoting different aspects of Southampton's rich history, including ships, docks, and even the civic centre itself. Over the decades, there's been some discussion as to who these figures are and what they may represent. More recently, Dr Andy Russell of the Southampton City Council Archaeology Unit has suggested for the first time that they are in fact representations of two mythical figures, more of that later. First, what do we know about the background of the carvings? That block of the Civic Centre was opened in November 1932. The architect was Ernest Berry Webber and the political mind was Sidney Kimber. In his memoir, Kimber does say this. I do want to place on record that the whole of the best furniture and other choice ornamentation was designed personally by Mr Berry Webber. So maybe it was Berry Webber. It's unknown for certain who worked on the carvings, but an old souvenir guide includes an advert for a local stonemasonry firm, Morant Brothers, and mentions that they worked on the whole of the exterior and interior stonework of the Civic Centre. It's unclear whether their duties extended to the more intricate sculpting work. Who are the man and the woman in the sculptures? A pamphlet held in Southampton City Archives and dated 1972 gives the following ascriptions. The figure represents administration. It is the head of an old wise man and at the back is the book of wisdom pierced throughout by the sword of justice. The central figure representing Britannia was carved in situ from one block of stone. Dr Russell's suggestion is that it's far more likely that the figures represent the mythical Sir Beavis and his wife Princess Jossian. Beavis being a legendary figure associated with Southampton for hundreds of years. Let's look at the figures in more detail. On first glance, the male figure looks to be akin to a Greek god, perhaps someone like Zeus. On this basis, the idea of attributing him to wisdom would be sensible. However, given the female figure wears a crown and is clearly royalty, one would expect her counterpart to be a king or at least to carry some royal symbol, but these are entirely absent. The male figure is not wearing a crown nor a helmet, but a simple cloth cap folded over at the front. It may in fact be a Phrygian cap, which is a soft cap bent over at the top. In ancient times, these hats were worn by many peoples in Eastern Europe and Anatolia. The Phrygian cap is often used to represent the concepts of freedom and liberty, in particular during the French Revolution in the 18th century. Does this fit with what we know of Beavis? In most depictions, Beavis is seen wearing a helmet, but it is possible that the designer of the carving is referring to a famous story from the legends of Beavis' life. In the tale, Beavis is held captive in Armenia, but through the completion of trials and adventures, eventually secures his freedom from slavery. Given that the Phrygian cap represents freedom, it would certainly follow that it is an apt choice of headgear for the figure to wear. Finally, according to the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, the Phrygians colonised Armenia, so the idea of Beavis wearing a Phrygian cap makes a good deal of logical sense. What of the book and the sword? The book could depict the sources from which the story of Sir Beavis is known. The oldest of these is Beave de Humtun, which dates from the first half of the 13th century. The sword would undoubtedly be his magical sword Mortgle, which according to the main Beaver's story was used to vanquish a giant called Ascupart, who later became his esquire. Turning to the figure of the woman, could she be Britannia? Britannia is usually shown wearing a classical Corinthian helmet, 
whereas the carving wears a headpiece that incorporates helmet elements, but more prominently, a crown piece featuring floral motifs. Instead, there are several reasons why the figure would fit the identity of Jossian. According to the Beavis legend, Jossian was a princess of the kingdom of King Hermin, a land which is usually placed in Armenia. Mounting the crown are two eagles, the national bird of Armenia, that features prominently in Armenian heraldry. The figure's cheek guard is raised, but it is possible that the sculptor has incorporated aspects of a traditional and ancient Armenian headdress. A coin of a Roman era king, Tigranes the Great, depicts an extended cheek cover and also shows two eagles either side of a large flower. Whoever the figures are, the designer has left us two magnificent carvings that provide much for us to explore, debate and discuss. <laughs>